So I'm Dr. Charles Sunday. I'm a research fellow here at the department. Um, I work in the general theme of uh, respiratory viruses and uh, how and children in this case respond to respiratory viruses and other exposures in early life. My work is to look at how different exposures in early life, in particular respiratory viruses and increasingly environmental exposures such as chronic smoke exposure, affect how children respond uh, in later life to other stimuli. So for instance, previous research has shown that children who get infected with respiratory viruses such as RSV uh, tend to become, to have a greater risk of developing diseases such as asthma. My work is to focus on how those exposures in early life stimulate th those responses that then predispose children to those infections later in life. I focus on specific viral infections. My pet virus is the respiratory syncytial virus. It's a virus that predominantly affects children in the first year of life, causing very severe pneumonia. But I also work on other things. I'm, I'm, I'm now transitioning uh, from looking specifically at viruses to looking at respiratory exposures more holistically. And I'm particularly interested in looking at Expo chronic exposure to indoor smoke pollution and how that predisposes children to respiratory problems later in life. Indoor smoke pollution in this case refers to exposure to biomass fuels that people in sub-Saharan Africa and other uh, low resource settings use predominantly as fuel for cooking, for lighting and other energy uses in the household. Now. Uh, the thing about uh, uh, indoor smoke pollution is that it, it is very noxious uh, exposure to the respiratory tract. And therefore, when children are chronically exposed to this exposure, they develop a response and we postulate that this response then sets them up for an increased risk of respiratory problems in later life. This is an area of research that we are now transitioning into using the tools that we have developed for research using res on respiratory viruses. From my point of view, um, working in airway inflammation, the one thing that I've found really surprising and really alarming, uh, at least within our part of the world in sub-Saharan Africa, is the effect, the disproportionate effect of chronic uh, smoke exposure on health in later life. An editorial in The Lancet about three or four years ago uh, termed it as a silent uh, epidemic of this chronic respiratory diseases. It's something that is very pervasive in our society that individuals are exposed to these noxious substances from biomass smoke, but no one has really ever looked in any great depth to see how the respiratory tract responds to these exposures. So my uh, work in the next couple of years, contingent of course upon funding, will be how those exposures in effect remodel the respiratory tract and in so doing how they elevate the risk of individuals then going on to develop chronic diseases such as asthma or COPD in later life. When you think about chronic respiratory diseases such as COPD, in the West COPD is an is a, is a disease of old people, predominantly those who have smoked for a lifetime. In places like Africa, the incidence of COPD is in people in their 30s. It's, it's really quite striking. Uh, uh, it stands to reason that such an early disease burden has to be associated with uh, a shortened life expectancy and increased mortality fairly early in life. The strange thing is nobody is looking at this. It's potentially a very serious thing that has gone under the radar, thus the, the editorial, the silent epidemic of COPD. So it's a really important subject in a very vulnerable population that is completely underappreciated. So uh, in, in, a, in a sense, what we are trying to do is invest the science that we have developed using other areas and bringing it to bear into this neglected area and understanding the biology of these exposures with the ultimate aim of developing appropriate interventions to address, to address this problem. The way we see our research uh, eventually transitioning into clinical translation 
is really by starting from the very basics, understanding the understanding the biology of these exposures, understanding how these exposures in effect affect the respiratory tract. And then once you've understood that, then you can start thinking about areas in which you can prevent the, the, uh, the, develop, uh, the noxious development of those exposures. In, in, in effect, looking at uh, what drives the pathology then helps you to devise mechanisms to, to, uh, to intervene against uh, that pathology. And that's really the way we are looking into it. Uh, therefore, ex the interventions that we eventually developed will be informed by uh, an understanding of the underlying biology of these exposures.